and once again welcome back to the channel I'm Mr Sensible. Today we're going to have a look at an offering by The Morgyle. He's going to tell us some stuff about the moon, eclipses and why it's all bunkum. Only it isn't. Before he tells us though, I want to thank my patrons. My most excellent patrons. Andrew Smith, Bernard Godfrey, David Cooley, Elizabeth Schneider, Frank Kelly, Frederick Cigar, Gary Tompkins, John Calvin Hobbs, Mick Farnham, Mitch Goldstein, Poison Toad, Roy Fraser, Simon D, Steve Pleggy, Sisyphus and Touchpad. Thank you all so very much. I have some news. Right the hand. We're going to have a debate. It's on. The rules are agreed. Everything's sorted. The date will be the 18th of October. Watch out for a teaser video coming this way soon. Okay, John, the Morgyle, go ahead. Roll VT. What's up, everybody? John the Morgyle here. Hi, John. Popping in for another Flat Earth video for you. Hope you enjoy it. So, uh, as you all know, recently we had a total lunar eclipse, the first full moon of the year this last week, on the morning of January 21st, 2019. And I got to tell you, it was beautiful, interesting, and completely debunked the globe Earth theory, as so many other observations tend to do. I think not. So what we saw for the eclipse was completely incompatible with the globe Earth theory. And I witnessed this firsthand. This isn't hearsay. This is an observation that probably... Hundreds of millions of people across the world witnessed this week. I think it's more likely a mistake. So, okay, what happened was, and forgive the rudimentary animation, but this should get the point across, uh, the shadow of allegedly the Earth in the ball Earth theory, but of course in the flat Earth reality, the shadow of the Earth could not possibly cover the moon, as they say, so what because did? the Earth is the physical stationary plane above which the Moon and the Sun go in their annual circuits. Well, lunar and annual circuits, respectively. So what we saw was this shadow, and we'll go ahead and humor the heliocentric hypothesis, and we'll say that the shadow of the Earth is allegedly transiting the Moon as the Moon uh, travels in to meet with the peculiar pinpointer of a shadow cast by the Earth from the Sun upon the Moon. So allegedly it's entering this shaded area and then continuing on. Monday the 21st was this shadow allegedly of the Earth coming up. Well, it was more like this. We'll get it right from my perspective. It was okay, cool. sort of coming in this direction. And I guess we should draw out the uh, good old rabbit in the moon, huh? The rabbit in the moon was like this. This shadow allegedly of the Earth was coming up this way and you ended up getting this sort of an effect here and then you had the totality and of course this was uh, a little bit red wasn't it so there you go and then what we saw really took me by surprise but the shadow then proceeded to come back down this way no it didn't so according to this model here which is the accepted standard model, the moon would have had to go um, into the shadow of the Earth and then regress back the way that it came. Because again, this is what we saw. No, you didn't. I prove it now. Watch this clip. This is a high definition, sped up time lapse of the total lunar eclipse, January 20th to 21st. 2019 and the shadow does not come back down. Having got the path of the shadow of the moon during the lunar eclipse incorrect, the more girl is now going to tell us about solar eclipses. And every so often uh, the moon is aligned to the sun upon the ecliptic plane during a perfect no moon phase. Okay, so there's no moon visible. And what occurs is the moon uh, allegedly, and, and I believe it is the moon transiting the sun in terms of a, a solar eclipse. However, I don't agree with the distances and the idea that the Earth is a ball in space. You wouldn't, would you? So the moon casts a shadow upon the Earth, which is usually 50, 75 miles in diameter. 
sometimes a few times as little as two or three miles in diameter. And so what they claim is that the sun's rays are coming in at uh, convergent and then divergent angles. So you've got this umbra penumbra theory phenomenon which causes uh, shadows to behave as you cannot find in nature uh, when using a single light source and a single obstruction to cast a shadow. For I'm not quite sure why you were showing us uh, images of annular eclipses. That's got nothing to do with whether it's penumbra, an umbra. It's just that the, the distance with the moon um, means that its apparent size is slightly smaller than the sun. From that light source, Nowhere in nature can you demonstrate the shadow tapering off into a point, uh, getting proportionally smaller with distance from the obstructing object. That is not how light and shadows work. I beg to differ. Let's have a look at another quick video. A great little video from Robert Lafleur. The shadow of the ball is the size of that circle. He keeps the shadow in view the full time, keeps it at a distance, and the shadow is smaller than the circle. And just to prove it, he goes back again, places the ball back over, and it's the same size. Uh, so that is what's claimed by Team Globetard in order to explain away the fact that the moon, allegedly a 2,000 mile diameter object, is casting a shadow that it's usually 75 miles in diameter. Well, we just shown in that video that a shadow will be smaller than the object. And um, again, the shadow can only, you know, if it was the um, equinox, then the shadow of the moon could only hit the equator. And if it were the solstice, uh, either way, it could uh, it could only be as far north or south as the tropics. Um, if the, you know, because again, it's it's just allegedly the Earth that's tilting to cause this change, not the position of the moon. No. So you know, if you're at the equinox, the shadow is necessarily at the equator. And if you are at the solstice, we'll say that's the northern summer solstice, then the shadow would be at, you know, possibly slightly north of the, uh, the Tropic of Cancer. No, that's not the only reason that uh, eclipse shadows fall further north and further south. The moon is in an elliptical orbit. It's at an angle to the ecliptic. You get precession. So over the, over the cycles, it's gradually changing. I've got a great little animated GIF I'll show you. Here's a view of the moon orbiting the Earth from the side. And as you can see, over the months, the angle, the inclination of the um, orbit of the moon changes. It's precession. And then we can have a look at the same from above the orbit because it's not a perfect circle, it's an ellipse. It's not at, um, on the same angle as the ecliptic, it's tilted. And we've got the Earth tilted as well. And the Earth's orbit is an ellipse. So all these variables add up and give different points of the Earth that are, are eclipsed during eclipses. So once again, the Morgul has shown himself to be a flat earther that can't visualize in 3D. It does seem to be a common thread amongst flat earthers. Oh well, look forward to seeing you all again next time. Until then, stay sensible. Shut up and sit down.